have you ever wondered what this button over here does? Well, if you haven't been wondering, then I guess you're okay with missing out on like 20% damage, or 16% damage, or 26% damage, I don't know, depending on who you have. Hi. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Lace, this is a Tower of Fantasy video, and today we're going to be talking about traits. Traits are probably one of the most important buffs that you could be getting that you're probably not, that I'm actually not, because as you can see, I have zero awakening on pretty much everybody. I don't have a single trait activated. And so in this video, I'm not only going to introduce you to the traits, but also to which ones are top tier. I'm a, I, yeah, I am going to make a tier list about it. And so before we go any further, I do need to mention, essentially, you can only activate one trait at a time. There's bad boy down here now to actually unlock these traits you have to go over to awaken and then do some gifting and give them some gifts in a way that you will achieve some awakening points so for example this smarty doll over here is giving 60 points to Meryl if I click on this other purple grade one it's also giving 60 points but if I go to another character for example Tsubasa this one is going to be giving 40 to Tsubasa this one's going to be giving 80 to Tsubasa and what that means is that there is actually a preferred gift for each of the characters and so when you finally given enough gifts to hit each of those milestones so if I come down to information you can see awakening points I need 1200 points to get her first trait and then 4,000 points down here to get her second trait. And so with that being said, I'm going to run through every single SSR character we have and their traits and then prioritize them in terms of like a tier list. And so welcome to the tier list. And as you guys already know, I don't really like tier lists. However, I like using tier lists to at least explain scenarios and to show relative standing. And so to kick things off, let's have a look at some of the S tier ones, starting off with Tsubasa. Coming down to the trait, you can see 1,200 points, 4,000 points, exactly as I said for activation. And so what Tsubasa gets is that each time she deals damage, you gain one stack of Fierce Strike. And this is capped at one stack per one second. Each stack adds 0.5% attack up to 15 stacks. What this means is that at 15 stacks, you can get plus 7.5% attack. And this bad boy is going to last 30 seconds. If you manage to actually unlock her next level, which is at 4,000 points, it goes up to 0.6% attack. And this one can actually stack up to 30 times, therefore giving this trait an 18% attack attack bonus. It also lasts for 30 seconds. However, as you can tell, because you can only get one stack per second, the ramp up time is going to be at least 30 seconds, which is quite a significant number. However, after you've gotten this one going, it's essentially a free plus 18% attack buff for the rest of your battle. I would say that it's almost unconditional because it's every time Tsubasa deals damage and you're essentially always dealing damage, right? And one thing I do want to mention is that it says here each time Tsubasa deals damage, this is like your Tsubasa simulacrum. And so it is going to apply for all of your weapons. You can use the shield with Tsubasa. Tsubasa shield deal damage one stack. And that is going to indeed apply to all of the other ones as well. So Tsubasa, as you can tell, this is kind of like an almost unconditional, you're almost gonna be always doing damage plus 18% attack buff. And that is why she is S tier. Moving on, next in the S tier, we have Samir. Now, Samir's one is just as good, if not a little bit better, if you are a good player. I'm not, so I would actually rather the Tsubasa buff. But essentially, you gain one stack of concentration every four seconds, you receive no damage. Every single one of these stacks increases damage dealt by 4% and can stack up to five times. Now, so that means that this one is going to be giving you a plus 20% damage buff. I want to make that really, really clear because a damage buff is different to an attack buff, right? Attack is buffing your attack stat. Damage buff is going to be buffing your final damage. So if, for example, you were going to do 1000 damage with a 20% attack buff, you are now going to do 1200 damage instead. On the other hand, if you're going to do 1000 damage, it's going to be harder to calculate because your attack is going to scale differently depending if you're auto attacking or if you're using skills because they are all dependent. They're all scaling. This one, 48.8 percent of attack so that means that your attack is actually really really sensitive to these things like this and so coming back to Samir plus 20 percent final damage at full stacks you can get full stacks in like 16 seconds 20 seconds that is a buff that you're probably not going to be finding anywhere else in the game however this is a high risk high reward one because after being hit you do lose a stack of concentration which is why I'm saying if you have boomer hands like me just stick to the Tsubasa or better yet we go over to Crow who is the third one in the S tier and Crows is exceptionally simple, where he increases the damage dealt by 10% and reduces damage taken by 6% if we are not in team play. Essentially, if you are a lone wolf, you don't go do bosses or whatever, or if you are doing bosses but you are not in a party, you're going to be getting these buffs. It is pretty much unconditional. However, on top of that pretty 
cracked our buff already. He enters combat and gets even more increased damage dealt by 12% for 12 seconds. That means that for clearing stuff really fast, he's going to be really good. However, for extended durations, I think he is going to lose out in damage to the other two, Tsubasa and Samir, especially for bosses, right? Bosses are not going to last for 12 seconds. And so for a moment, you will have 22% damage dealt, but then after that, you're going to get reduced. So if we're talking about like general content, you're going around just killing things and stuff, Crow is probably going to be the best. However, for content that is going to require combat lasting over 12 seconds, Crow, you know, Crow is still really freaking good considering it's like almost unconditional, pretty much unconditional, but you certainly can get more value out of the Tsubasa or the Samir if you can play well. Moving down to the A tier, we've got Shido over here and it's really cool to see that Shido is actually excelling at something. And the reason I rated her at an A tier is because when you use a weapon skill or a discharge skill, it will increase all types of attacks by 16%, which is a significant amount, but then also increase physical attack by an additional 10%. The other side of this, however, is that it only lasts for 8 seconds and it has a 16 second cooldown. And so this is, you know, it's like 50% uptime, not exactly the best. I would probably rather take any of the other S tier ones considering they have unlimited duration. And it's for that reason that I rate Shido at an A. However, if you do have her and you don't have any of the others, I still think that she is a pretty good pickup. The other downside to Shido is that she is centered around physical attack. So this extra physical attack buff, most of the time you're not going to be using it because you're going to be DPSing with your King or your Samir or your Tsubasa. And so this guy over here, like at this point in the game, does not have any value. Next in the A tier, we've got Zero. Now Zero is a really, really malleable one where he could be A or he could be C. Right, and let's talk about the circumstances in which that would actually cause that to actually manifest, whether he's A or C. Now, his trait is a really interesting one. Whenever you use a weapon skill, remember, you have three weapon skills because you have three weapons because you are the zero now. You get a reduction in the cooldown time for your relics by three seconds at 4,000 points. However, you can only activate this for the same weapon one time every five seconds. Well, most of the weapons are probably not going to have like a cooldown of five seconds, and so that should not be a concern. And so where exactly this is an A or potentially Essentially an S is places like PvP or your bygone phantasm, right? Because you are going to be taking in like, for example, the machine gun one, like with all the rockets and stuff. I'm talking about like this one right here, or you could be taking jetpack, or you could be taking like some of these really, really giga busted one, the Colossus arms into PvP, alternate destiny. We got space time rift, which is essentially a venti in a item. And if you can actually make use of any of these, like the reduction in cooldown is going to give you value, then surely, absolutely. A or even S. However, if you are engaging in content where there is very little value or no value in your relics, then zero is gonna unfortunately go to the C or even D. But to be honest, I would say that there is more game modes that actually require relics or can use relics than there are not. And so it's for that reason, I would say that zero, yeah, and A is pretty fair. Next up, we've got King over here. Now King is a pretty straightforward one where I think it's lifesteal if I remember correctly. Not quite lifesteal, but every five enemies killed by King restores HP equal to 10% of max HP. Now, now, you can see, you can imagine all of the different places that like, this would be good in your general content, in your open world. It would be bad in your bosses. When you're only fighting one thing, there is nothing to kill. And so if you actually do need sustain, then King, you know, King is actually pretty good. I would say he is an A. However, if you don't need sustain, which a lot of tier lists, a lot of guides, a lot of like the meta actually assumes you don't, then he could definitely move down to a B or even a C again. But again, if you guys are having trouble with like sustaining, with just trying to keep alive, even on general content, then I would highly recommend this because this is pretty nice. Now, we're landing into the B tier where first of all, I've got Nemesis, right? That's a surprising face just considering Nemesis is actually pretty busted everywhere else. And so here is why Nemesis's trait is actually dog shit. It's not dog shit. It's just like, unfortunately, not generalist, right? Everything that we've actually seen today so far, it's like, oh, if you deal damage, then you get more damage. If you uh, kill mobs, then you get some HP back. If you do something like that's kind of general that everybody can do, then you get some kind of effect. Now, Nemesis is not like that, unfortunately, because it is tied to her summoning electrode utility. And so with her trait, after summoning an electrode, she deals vault damage equal to 100% of attack to all enemies within 30 meters and also heals all allies, which is, you know, it's actually fantastic. But if you're not even running like the Nemesis weapon, then this is freaking trash because it literally does nothing. And then if you run into content where like your Nemesis is not really effective, such as like some contents which are like, oh, electro slash vault resistant. But for Nemesis, if you are running Nemesis, 
this is actually really freaking sick. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to rate the general use ones, like these ones up here. Just give me damage, just give me heals, just give me shield or whatever, whatever. They are, in my opinion, going to have like a wider amount of use cases than, um, I don't know, dropping electrodes, right? And so after Nemesis, we have Coco. And Coco is, you know, she, it's fantastic. It is absolutely fantastic if you're a healer. When Coco uses a support type weapon, she essentially like gives you more heals. And then she also gives you some level of attack buffs, right? And that's pretty, pretty nice. Except for the fact that the attack buff actually only lasts for five seconds, but it is distributed. But the thing about this one is that you are forced into running a support type weapon. This could be your nemesis. This could be your zero. This could be your Coco. But you can see why I'm not really looking upon this one favorably, right? The other ones, again, you can use any type of weapon and it will trigger. This one, you have to be actually using a support type weapon most of us are not going to be running at unless of course you are running a nemesis 24 7 uh yeah that's probably like half the population so you know what it might be actually pretty good so yeah i know how this looks i'm shitting all over coco and i seem to only be shitting all over coco in all of my videos however i do want to say that when we get to the raid level of things when we start having like the two healer two tank and dps's kind of construct i do think that coco is going to be s tier and she is going to be s tier in a lot of different places just not today. And so moving on, we've got Huma next. And Huma is an interesting one where she is one of the unconditional ones that are defensive. However, I'm not really exactly a fan of the defensive traits. The TLDR for this one is that as you are receiving more and more damage, you will gain a bigger and bigger shield. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe it's good, but like not exactly good in the open world. I mean, if you keep getting killed by the bosses, but I really wouldn't recommend actually taking this one over like some of the other damage ones. It is good, right? If you are dying a lot or something, um, I would suggest working on your dodging and probably skill. <laughs> yeah, I can't, it's, it's sorry. It's just so hard to recommend this when you're giving up like 18% attack or 20% damage or 26% damage. And then last of all, we have my girl Meryl. Meryl was fantastic. Let me uh, let me show you guys why. So as you can see over here, reduce frost damage received by Meryl by 20% or 25% and then gain immunity to frostbitten and reduce duration of being frozen by 50%. Fantastic. There are some world bosses that actually freeze you, they'll make you mold and you can have that duration reduced by 50%. That's nice. However, what if I told you on the China version, Meryl's surroundings will freeze. What that meant was that as long as you were in Meryl and you had this 4K.1, you could actually walk on water. You would actually be like, like there are characters from like mythology or TV or whatever, where everywhere you walk, like the surroundings freeze kind of thing, right? Meryl was that. Meryl's not that <laughs> in global. And so unfortunately, because the use case of this one is so, so narrow, it's all about like frost damage and being frozen. I would say that Meryl, whilst this one is good, you can deprioritize it. So you can pull this out later on when we are fighting the relevant bosses, but for general use, mm, I wouldn't say so. And so with that, that should actually cover off all of the SSRs. I didn't want to cover the SRs because the SRs are predominantly like world exploration things. If you want your mounts to move faster, then you better be getting your Hilda up because she gives you an extra 10% move speed. And so the last thing that I did want to cover was how exactly you could actually build up this 4,000 points. All of the different ways that you can pick up some of these metalware rare items like these gifts to give to your Meryl or to give to your favorite wife. And so the first source of these gifts is this commissary shop over here. And I'm in the point store tab. And as you can see, special gift, fine gift, small gift. Obviously you want the special gifts and these are actually selected. So you can choose any one of the surprises in the box, meaning you can target whichever unit you have. You can go ahead and slam all of these and then just like use them all for like a particular doll that your uh, Tsubasa finds attractive, like give them 80 points and then away you go. However, another one of the stores, I think it's the Crystal Dust store, it actually is going to have these boxes as well. I would recommend not getting them from this store and only just getting them from this one here. The reason is because this crystal dust store has a lot of progression materials, right? You've got the booster modules and you've got like these advancement modules over here. And then you can also save up eventually to actually buy gears. Yeah, I probably wouldn't be touching these gifts. The next source of these gifts is actually here. I am in Banjo's docks right now. And there's this guy over here called Claude, item vendor. He is opposite the fast food guy. I'm gonna come over and talk to him and you will see that he actually offers not only gifts, but actually machine parts as well. And if I scroll down a little, you'll be able to see, you got snack box, you got 
got the paper pinwheel and there are these tags toys asperia etc etc so you could buy these ones and match them up for the simulacra traits that you are looking for and so the last place that i know of of getting these gifts is actually this island the cetus island up here and there is uh, and it's not that one but i believe there is a claw machine that you can actually play every day three times i'm freaking trash at it but it is at least a chance of getting three gifts a day i'm pretty sure it's this one right here and as you can see strange gadget game open plays remaining three times i'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot but the tldr for this one is that apparently these ones with the tail this one is apparently easier to get than the rest i i can't really um vouch for that because i freaking suck at this game but no way oh oh well there you have it Apparently it is the easiest, huh? <laughs> but yeah, that's the three main, actually no, there's a fourth method. I completely forgot. Let me show you guys. It is gonna be the black market over here in Banjus. You can see the space rift over here, black market. I'm gonna go ahead and teleport. And for you guys who don't know about this, it's essentially Hopkins offering you a box every day. There are two boxes there and you can actually select which one you want and you will get a toy. So from the teleport point, you just run up here and he should be at the end of the corridor. Now this guy is over here and I think I might have done it today, but essentially you just talk to him and oh, okay. I guess I do get it today. And so all you have to do is hit, let me try. He's gonna spawn two boxes, one or the other. It's freaking RNG, I think. Like you just pick one and something is gonna pop out. Woo, that's what I'm talking about. And that is gonna be a purple gift. He's gonna give me, um, uh, I don't know what the frick that is, but I'm going to take it, you know, I'm going to take it and give it to one of my characters. So my guys, hopefully that was kind of helpful. You found the tier list helpful. You found like all of the different methods to get gifts helpful. And honestly, I want to leave you guys with a question. And that is, do you know how to get other gifts? Because I'm a little bit behind. I, uh, I haven't been doing it. I've kind of been ignoring it just because I've been lazy. And so if you guys do know another way of acquiring gifts outside of the methods that I talked about, let us know down in the comments below. Otherwise, if you did enjoy this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, or to turning on that notification bell. However, as my girl Tsubasa once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.